We are very pleased today to be here at the Saladrigas Art Gallery at Belen Jesuit Preparatory School in Miami. I'm chatting today with Federico Gandolfi Vanini, who is the fourth generation owner of Frascione Arte in Florence, and his wife, Daisy Diaz, who is the cultural director. We're gonna to get to know them today and talk about Daisy, who is originally from Miami, moved to Italy, and now how together as a family with their four children have recently moved to Miami. But most importantly, we're here to talk to you today about this spectacular exhibition. It's called Faith, Beauty and Devotion, Medieval, Renaissance and Baroque Paintings. And you have an opportunity if you're here in South Florida between now and mid-December to come see it and it's free. My name is Lisa Morales and I am the editor of Live in Italy magazine, a travel and lifestyle publication dedicated to all things Italy. So welcome, Federico and Daisy. Thank you, Elisa. So we'll start with you, Federico. Give us some introduction. Where are you from? I'm from Florence, Italy. Uh, I born there and I lived there. I studied all my study in, uh, in Italy. And uh, I opened my, after the study art history, I opened my art gallery in 2008 in Florence, in Via Maggio. And uh, since I moved to Miami in 2020 with Daisy and the kids, I have always been there. That's great. And you, Daisy? I'm actually from Miami and uh, I was here all of my life until I went to college in Boston. And from Boston, my studies took me to Italy. I studied and worked there until I met Federico and my children, my four children were all born in, in Florence. That's great. So let's go to that story. How did you meet? Yeah, I remember the day uh, that was uh, 18 years ago, 2005. Uh, it was a night of June, and uh, in Florence, the night of June, as you probably know, Lisa, they are wonderful, you know, because even if it's a bit warmer in the day, the night get a little bit colder, and, uh, and there is this amazing uh, smell of all these flowers that blossom in, uh, in Florence. And uh, the day I was invited by my cousin to have a male dinner, so me, my cousin, my brothers, all the, all the male members, of my family at uh, this house in, outside of Florence, the countryside. And uh, I was not supposed to go because there was a game and I, I was there watching the game, so I didn't, I didn't want to go. But I opened the window, it was uh, before dinner, I opened the window and an amazing smell came through. And so I decided to take my moped and go all the way to my cousin's house to, to breathe the air that was amazing. And uh, as soon as I get there, I saw Daisy right there. She was already there. So as uh, you know, and uh, as I can say, you never know that that day could be the most important day of your life or one of the most important day of your life. I love that. And here you are today and we're going to get more into that. So um, did you get married in Italy? We were married in the Basilica di San Miniato overlooking Florence. And it was just a special place for us. Um, we went there. We we went to our our, our Sunday, our sort of our, our marriage classes there, and uh, we we followed our faith. And we were married in Florence. And half of Miami seems to have gone to attend what was now 15 years ago. Wow, that's amazing! Month, so. Yeah, congratulations, your anniversary month as well. So here's a tough question, Daisy. Besides Federico. What about Italy just stole your heart? Gosh, it was one of those things that people say when you're sort of um, meant to be there. Um, I, I didn't have any family members or any heritage that's Italian per se. Um, my family is, also, is all South American. But when I went, I just felt a sense of belonging and I fell in love with Florence immediately. Um, everything just I felt at home um, my parents uh, came here from Cuba so they sort of exiled and they always said you know they felt at home for a particular reason when I put foot in Florence I just got off that plane and I saw the Duomo and um, the art the history the food I can't pick one particular thing it was in it was a together of I even love the smell of the streets I mean everything is 
one of the things that drew me there. And then when our family, when I met Federico, it was just that sealed the deal. It yeah. was uh, <laughs> that was all that was missing. And uh, four children later, um, we still have our home there and we love it. Right. And right now your home is in two places. So why did you decide? I mean, I mean, living in Florence, why would you move to Miami? We came here for, um, for the pandemic. Uh, it was March 2020, so um, Italy was just being eaten by Milan, if you remember, you know, they were... So we were, we didn't know what to do, and uh, they, would, they say that they could have last one month, maybe two weeks. So we decided to, to go and uh, slow the spread, as they would say before, at the beginning, to in Miami and to Daisy's parents. And uh, we moved right away, actually, because we thought, we. We took the last flight to, from Europe to United States, so the day after we're not flight anymore. And we came uh, mm -hmm. right from, from Paris to, to here. And you know, the two months to slow the spread, then became three, then became four. And uh, then eventually we liked here and we had the kids in school here. And so it, it was a smooth transition. Oh, that's good. Because that, that's definitely, I mean, your, your kids were, their first life was in Italy, right? So that must have been a challenge, uh, the, the difference in moving to Miami, right? It was absolutely a difference. It, it was, we wanted, it was very hard because we wanted everyone to be happy. And, you know, it's, it's, as a parent, when your children are, on, on, when there's unrest, you don't feel that everything is going smoothly. Um, and I can almost pinpoint the moment because it was very much tied to why we did this exhibit. And it was when our son, we have three boys mm -hmm. and one daughter. And when my son came to Belen and just felt at home here as well, it just sort of, for him, he clicked. Like we, we saw, like he had been going to schools. He was trying to figure out why are we here? Why, what, what's going on? The pandemic was very hard for the children and they just didn't know what was going on. And I, I looked at Federico and I said, this is a, such a wonderful school. We have wonderful schools in Florence as well. But for us in our situation, it was really the education and seeing the children happy here fundamentally. They really enjoyed um, just the education that they were provided here. That's great. That's wonderful. So congratulations. You recently received your green card. That's yeah, a big yeah. deal. Wow, well, eight months ago. <laughs> yes. So, this series is originally called Chat with an Expat. So, so what it is, is people obviously who move and transport their life from one country to another. How would you define that? Because now you're on your way to becoming an American citizen. So how do you feel? You know, I always, uh, since I was a kid, I always loved the United States for the freedom, the market, uh, the 80s, I mean, uh, for an Italian kid. And you spent some time here in the United States, Yes, too. yes. yes. Ev eventually, when I was a little bit older, yes. I worked uh, in Dallas uh, when I was 19. So being raised in Italy, being an American lover, you know, I was looking Rocky, Rambo, all this movie in the 80s. I always loved the United States. And my family, they were big American lovers. And I, uh, I had the chance uh, when I just finished high school, I, I was studying law and uh, at the University of Florence. And uh, because I like traveling a lot, I was moving to Sweden often, and because my cousin, part of my family lives there in Stockholm, I was, uh, uh, you know, to pay my expenses and uh, especially the travel, I was uh, buying things in auctions and selling at the flea market and Saturday and Sunday in, uh, in Italy. And it was going quite well. And one of these flea market, I met, I met this, uh, American guy that he moved with his family, his wife and two kids in Florence. He bought a beautiful house outside of Florence in Fiesole. And uh, he loved antiques and uh, he asked me if I would have liked to move in Dallas and open an, like an emporium of antiques. So here we are at 21 year old. I moved from uh, Florence to Dallas for a couple of years because then I understood that my life was art history. I had to do the university, so I moved back to Florence and I did my university, but uh, I thanks Roger was his name that uh, he gave me that opportunity to know better United States and to actually it was a great opportunity for a 21 year old. Yeah, that is amazing. And here you are now beginning your new life yeah. here permanently. So that's great. What about you, Daisy? You were once very recently the foreigner in Italy. 
um, what did that mean to you? Are you an Italian citizen? You know. Oh, I loved it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Uh, I am an Italian citizen. Very proud uh, to have dual citizenship. Um, I had a store, a retail store, for over ten years in the center of Florence. Um, we did distribute. We, we distributed. I'm still a distributor in part for um, an American brand in the state in Italy. Um, it was just a wonderful experience to meet also expats. Florence is, as as we know, Florence is a, uh, there's an abundance of expats and uh, dinners, activities. We would do our own, you know, trick or treats for the kids or Thanksgiving. There was always a connection to the states, and we found that um, however we could, and we loved it. So it was fun. It was definitely fun. Great. So here you are now, your your Italian American family in the United States. It's I imagine it's very important to preserve your Italian heritage, starting with the language or anything else. What else is really important that you want your children to hold on to, even though now they're being raised in the United States and going to school here? Oh gosh. I think they can get the they definitely eat yeah. like Italians. Uh, they definitely, uh, you'll never see kids eat like uh, octopus and No crawfish. Cuban American food? They do. No, they eat, they're, they're just well. No, they eat rough. everything. Yeah, they I mean. eat everything. So they, and they, they're like real foodies, all of them, all four. So they'll go and they'll eat, you know, botarga and they're like, you know, people are usually like, oh, or like smelly That's cheeses, and, yeah. you know, like things like that, that usually kids are shy away from. Um, the culture in many, many ways, Federico always talks, we always talk to them in Italian and um, it's important. When we go back, we always take them everywhere um, so that they can also rediscover and see new places. We were just recently at the Vatican and they, they saw that, we take them to Venice, we take them. Now it's fun because we're sort of tourists in our own, you know, in their own country. So they discover what, they kind of never understood why Florence was packed with tourists before. They were like, why are all these people here? We can't get through the streets. That's hard. They, or anyone they else were just, to leave. <laughs> yeah, they were <laughs> always, it was, for them. well, we couldn't get to school because they were like, the tourists would be in the streets and yes. we're trying to drive to school and there's all these people trying, just looking up, not at us and looking at the buildings. So when we take them to Florence, they're kind of like, ah, yeah. now when they're, they're like, now we kind of get it because it's so yeah. different. So. And Italy is the number one country visited post COVID. Oh, yeah. We there, was, the summer, there, yes. there was a lot of Which people. Which explains the crowds. <laughs> yeah. There was really a lot of people. Yeah. Definitely. Actually, well, we got around. You can you can go. There's some places, the countryside, like if you know where to go. We don't, I mean, as South Floridians, we wouldn't go to the beaches where the ones that were slammed. So we tried to, the mountains, the Dolomites, like if you think of how long the Italian peninsula is, you can get away I without, know. you know, the maddening crowds, but. And that's our goal as a magazine, but that's a conversation for another day about maybe your favorite places to get away from it. But for now, I think we're, it's really important that we talk about this exhibition. So give us some history to Frascione Arte, because I know, you know, some of our readers, our second largest audience is from Italy. You're probably very familiar with Via Maggio. So tell us about the gallery. So the, I opened the gallery in 2009, but uh, 2008, sorry in Florence and the same year that I got married. But this is a family tradition. So it started by the, actually the, we started in 19th century from the father of my great, from the father-in-law of my great grandfather. Mm -hmm. So that makes uh, five generations with me. Right. And uh, it was in Naples. And uh, they were, I think in the 19th century, they were selling more, uh, they were not specialized in art. Uh, it was more like an antique dealer. And uh, with my great grandfather was one of the first art dealer, was actually really one of the first art dealer in Italy and in the world to be specialized only in art. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was already selling things to American Museum at the beginning of the 20th century. It's incredible. Yeah, it goes all the way up, up there. And then he, my grandfather, my grandfather for me was a mentor. He, what I am now is thanks to him, and uh, I always loved him since I was a kid. I like this uh, going in his house with all these paintings, you know, putting on the in the corridor with this dark corridor. I remember that painting over there. Right. <laughs> to me, that's a dream come true. What I, I read that. I remember like exactly you just that running picture. around master paintings. It was it was, was incredible. I was running around with this. So I was a little kid. I, I was always impressed by these and. Uh, and I had a special relationship with my grandfather, really special one. And, uh, 
And that's why my grandfather didn't want me to do this, this, this business because it's a business that you do with passion, mm -hmm. a lot of passion. It's not a business that you can, you know, study and that's it. And so it's, um, he, he told me, you know, when I, to go to law school and uh, starting there, but then at, at the coincidence, you know, sometimes God put you in the road and then you see, after all, I, as I told you before, I was doing the flea markets to pay my, and then I met this man. So I get to that business anyway without my grandfather. So when I went to Dallas, then I came back, my grandfather understood that I was what I wanted to do and they helped me and we started to work together. And uh, I was studying art history in the morning and stayed with him every afternoon and learning the secret of uh, this uh, business. So that's how I started. And then when he passed away, I finished my university and then I decided to open the gallery in his name. Frascione was his last name. Right. That's why I called it Frascione. Right. Because his gallery that he closed in the 80s, I think, it was named Frascione. So. Right. No, but it, it, you're carrying on his legacy. That's yes. beautiful. Yes. So tell us about the exhibition. You can give us a bit of insight, maybe how the idea came about because we are at Belen Jesuit Preparatory. Yeah, the idea came about uh, 10 months ago. So we did it very fast uh, because usually to build uh, an exhibition like this, you take a couple of years. And we were having dinner at Sapore di Mare with uh, Daisy and Father Willie and other two friends. And uh, so uh, I was, no, I was just explaining Father Willie who we are, we moved, what, what we were doing. And uh, I was talking in particular about a painting here that is exhibited here by Rubens. And uh, he was, you know, ready. Like, I mean, he saw the picture, he loved it. And he said, why we don't build up an exhibition? Why you don't send it to Miami? We do, a, we do a, an exhibition. And yeah, so I started the day after, I started to do, to call the office in Italy, find out which paintings could be, you know, delivered to the United States, right. uh, shipped to the United States, because we, there's a lot of, yeah, it's a complicated yeah, process a, that people don't understand. It's a lot of paperwork. Because works. these are cultural icons. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you need a lot of paperwork from Italy. To, and uh, I, I needed something that has already the paperwork mm -hmm. and uh, or something that I could uh, get it easy in a few months. So it's uh, I started with that and uh, with uh, Miss San Juan, uh, we had a special feeling. She really embraced this task. Uh, she loved it. and. Uh, She's the one that actually really built it up at the very end. So I did a selection of paintings. She, she looked at that and we decided together, me, Daisy and her, which, uh, what we wanted from this exhibition. So the things uh, that, of course, this is a school of faith. So we wanted faith, but there is even secular picture, a couple of them. And uh, we wanted, is a school, so we wanted like a, a panorama of, uh, of all art history from the medieval side to most recently the late Baroque. So we had all this, uh, and we, I think we did uh, quite a good job on summarize seven, you know, six century of pictures, I not easy. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great timeline. That's really important to say, say if, uh, too, if you're coming to visit the exhibition that I've learned so much by reading this catalog. This is your guide. It's gonna open up um, so many windows of knowledge for you if you're coming to see the exhibition because you can see some of these paintings in their historical context. It's just a beautiful job that you've done. You, as the cultural director, maybe you might wanna say um, what between yourself and Belen was the goal for Faith, Beauty and Devotion, the exhibition. No. The goal, gosh, we uh, foremost we wanted to educate. We, we, our goal was to really share the the history of it, the culture, um, and around that it was wonderful. The feedback that we received, also working with the school on creating events around the exhibit, um, everything was of interest. We have um, the music aspect is also going to be happening with a, a soprano coming to the exhibit. We will have wine tasting, poetry readings. Um, everything, Drinking. fine wines, everything around the event, food. Um, we're, we'll be hosting 
evening dinners, very much how we would do in Florence. We looked at our cultural um, uh, events that we've hosted before, and we said, gosh, you know what? They might not be ordinary in Miami, but we've done them before. So we're doing the aperitivo that for us is, you know, sacrosanto. So there's things like that around the art. So you can, ha there's nothing like having good company, good friends, a good glass of wine, talking about the art, where it came from, how, what we do. So it just, it's really how, it, it's, it's unique here, but we do this a lot in Italy. So it's people, one of the things that we enjoyed and embraced is the enthusiasm that we see bringing this to Miami. Um, we do this a lot for our business in, in Florence, uh, but it's so unique to South Florida that um, the questions that we get, we're going to like, gosh, we've never been asked that before. Like there, it's really, really refreshing for us, um, especially the aspect from the students' perspective. I know there will be even field trips to the exhibit. There's a great interest um, from the middle to the high school, especially area. And I think that it'll be quite, quite a treat for students who are learning this to get out of the classrooms, kind of how I was Definitely. when I was young. And, 100%. you know, this is, oh, this is what we're talking yeah. about. And that, it's a panel and it's not canvas. And just seeing it, instead of just talking and doing a lecture at class, yeah. I thought it would just bring a new perspective to, to the students. So. Yes, it's a living history lesson. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, so um, before we wrap it up, I just want to ask um, one question, is that, you were raised in Catholic school in Miami, and it's been very important for you to raise your children, well, your two sons here, I, Bell and Joseph, with. Uh, what went into that decision? Was it very natural coming and moving to Florida? Um, yes, I, I, our faith is, is what grounds us. Uh, I think that during the journey that Federico was explaining how we got here, uh, it was funny because we really did come for two weeks when we came during the yeah. pandemic. And then, and then we kept staying, and then we kept it. Could just kept going longer, and I and Federico and I would just say, we have to have faith that this is what's meant to be. Right. We 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 had faith that there was a greater plan, so it really guided us into all our decision making. You know, we're a family of faith, and the we appreciate the education here at Belen. It's a Jesuit education, so it's really in a way, the Renaissance man that yes. they're creating. So it felt that we love that the children, the, the students are exposed to a little bit of everything. They study theology and, and the sciences, and yet the sports are very, you know, it's they're well-rounded. And that's very important in today's, you know, I don't want them to be just fixated on, you're going to be a scientist or you're going to be an artist. No, I think that to really appreciate the art, it's really nice to have that 360 degree education and that tends to be really offered at a school like Belen. Mm -hmm. um, the electives, you can do economics and you can do sculpture. Like there's some sort of connection that, you know, enriches your, your education and makes you. So Federico, we're talking about the timeline and you have carefully selected paintings. So talk about maybe three paintings do you think are very significant part of this exhibition to kind of take us through the medieval renaissance and baroque period okay yeah so i think it would be a question that they will ask me a lot, a lot of time and uh you know out of the 30 paintings every single painting has an, has an history is mm -hmm. an history related to me so it's like a, a relationship between me and uh, and the painting and uh, every painting has uh, been uh, selected as a as a masterpiece or as a good representation of uh, of the time, so, but uh, if I have to take three uh, paintings to speak about, I will sh surely start with the cross. And I start with the cross because it's, uh, it's the eldest piece. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not even uh, 1300, so it's, we are still in the 13th century. We are in Assisi. And uh, as you know, you know, Assisi at the time was the center of the culture of the world. Uh, St. Francis was, uh, was canonized saint uh, just a few years earlier. And, uh, and uh, all the artists, most important artists, were all working on the Basilica di San Francesco in Assisi. And uh, Giotto came there, and uh, Cimabue came there, mm -hmm. the painting painters from uh, Rome came there. And uh, this painter, which we don't know the identity, 
because at the time, you know, it was difficult. We have no documents. Uh, the, the, the art is difficult to find uh, uh, the history of a painting because it's called, at the time they were artisan and uh, with no documentation. So these artists probably went to Assisi, for sure, actually. And uh, it was a Byzantine painter. So with the old influential from uh, the very Gothic art, mm -hmm. the very medieval art, sorry. And, uh, and when he saw Giotto and the fabric of Assisi, he tried to change himself, tried to modernize himself. And so we can see in the cross, the Byzantine style mixed uh, with, uh, with then would be the modern art of Giotto. Right. So it's the first reflection, but the painter was probably older than Giotto. Mm -hmm. And it was probably painted born in the 50, 1250, 1240. And uh, so the result is anyway very Byzantine. So that's a very good representation of uh, the medieval side. And then we have a, a small uh, representation of uh, four or five pictures of uh, what we call the, the gold leaf panel. So they are the gold back panel, they have the golden back, there is two a representation of medieval art. And uh, going through the time, for sure, another very important thing is the, the portrait of Tintoretto. Mm -hmm. Tintoretto was a Venetian master. In a time that Venetian Renaissance was coming up, uh, let's not say against the Florentine one, but with a different point uh, of view. And uh, wh while in Florence, the idea of Renaissance was summarized in the drawing. So we're paying a lot of attention to the drawing, the dimensions, the prospectiva. In, uh, in, Venice, in Venice was the, was the brush, was the colors, right. so not the drawing. And Tintoretto was a master of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're very lucky to have this portrait because Tintoretto is a very rare painter. Mm -hmm. And uh, the portrait uh, of uh, Morosini is, uh, is an important full-size portrait. So we know that in London, National Gallery, the National Gallery of London, there is uh, another portrait of, by Tintoretto of Morosini, so same painter, same subject, but different because the portrait in London is uh, a small scale, mm -hmm. is uh, just, a, just a face and uh, with a little window on his right. We're lucky to have here his full-size painter. And uh, I would say that another piece that of course is very important, actually maybe is the little bit of a star of uh, this exhibition, is the Rubens. Mm -hmm. So this painting is, uh, has been commissioned uh, by Rubens, two Rubens, sorry, by the Marquois Marchese, no, Marquois, the of Leganes. Mm -hmm. It was the cousin of the King of Spain. So uh, Rubens, together with Jan Wildens, one of his uh, work, uh, a painter was working with Rubens, did, uh, Wildens did the landscape, and uh, Rubens uh, did the characters or if you, uh, uh, some parts of the characters. You know, Rubens has uh, like a factory at the time. It was all the best painter of Northern Europe, they're all working for Rubens. So it was yeah. just, you know, it was a real a big factory and uh, paintings were going out all the time. So he was working on it but, and let this great artist work in too. And uh, so he has been in, the, in this amazing collection this, uh, this, uh, of Leganes. And, uh, and then moved uh, in England mm -hmm. and then to the Spencer Churchill Collection. So an important family that is, uh, they can represent people like Diana, Diana Spencer and mm -hmm. Winston Churchill. And so this is a very representative picture of uh, what the exhibition is. Uh, and uh, and be even because of the subject, there is a, it's a very interesting subject uh, because uh, you know, uh, Rubens was uh, something more of an artist. Mm -hmm. He was a, a diplomat, he was a politician, he was a smart man and a great artist. Mm -hmm. So, and this a, painting is a little bit of summary of all these things because uh, it's the devotion of Rudolf II of Augsburg that Rubens did because um, the, 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 the Spanish family and the Austrian family, they both having, uh, they both say that they come from the Asburgic heritage. So at the time, Europe was a little bit on the verge of a war, or anyway, was, was, the situation was uh, difficult. 
and uh, the, the, the painting is a message and say, you know, the devotion of Rudolf of Augsburg that goes out from his horse and let the priest go in and up and bring in the Eucharistie to a, to a house in the landscape, yeah. that means that you are, you know, as Bujik, you are peacekeeper, you bring peace, you bring Christians in Europe. That was the message of the painting. And uh, so, you know, the message is still there. And, and uh, so that's, I would say, all is about the three pictures, maybe they can. Uh, yeah, but likewise, there's a very complex story behind all of those paintings. Yes, a personal story too also. Yes, a you know, personal because... story. And that's important too. I guess we should talk about that quickly, is that what some people might not understand is that many of these have been held in your family yeah. and part of pr other people's private collections. Yeah, they have a lot of story, a lot of history, and uh, like in the Rubens, is a personal story because that painting has always been, in, my grandfather bought it at Christie's, in 1965, mm. it was the big sale of the mansion of the Spencer Churchill. Right. They sold a lot of beautiful pictures, a lot, and uh, and this was one of that. And my grandfather bought it. So since I was a kid, the painting has been hanged in a wall, <laughs> and I remember it That's very well. That's unimaginable for most of us. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, no. If you can imagine what I did, you know that. Uh, I don't know if, but then it's a, it's a it's a cool story. It's, um, it's, uh, it, uh, in 2012, oh, no. nah, yeah, I, that's, I think it's a cool story. Sorry. It's, uh, I, I, I bought this uh, kind of panel, how, how, how you can call it? A projector screen. A projector and then a screen, you know, the screen was uh, as big as the painting. So it goes down in front of the painting and the projector goes, I could see the World Cup. The soccer, Italy just won two, two, <laughs> two times before. And so I had all my friends. I feel this is Italy after all, right? <laughs> yeah. So it was all my friends, everybody gathering together. And the painting was covered with this bl this panel on top and the projector was going. So and uh, so I have this even even though I have, because it's very heavy, so I couldn't move it. And uh, I, I came out with this brilliant idea of, of having these things. But it was a lot of fun. A lot, actually, Italy plays so bad. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, we just but we lived with the painting, so we yeah, that yeah, was so part of the yeah, house, it was you know. Part it's, of your living it's, space. It's part of the house, so that that one has this history of me, myself, my grandfather, my grandfather with me. So it's a, a lot of personal history. Other painting, I bought it, so I remember the day, I remember how, I remember the love that I feel for him, and uh, so they all have a lot of personal, a lot of history of the pictures. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what? How many things this painting have seen in 500, uh, 700 years? You know, the yeah. flood, fire, war, all kinds of things. Unbelievable. So many people have put this together. I mean, thank you for spearheading this along with Belen. I think it's a great treat for South Florida. If you are visiting South Florida, be sure to visit the Belen Jesuit website. It'll be belenjesuit.org and then slash exhibition on between now and mid-December and with special programming all the way through Art Basel Miami. And I know there's a lot of travelers here. Please come visit. This is an experience for many that you're never gonna have again. So thank you. thank you. That thank was you. wonderful. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. I am Lisa Morales, the editor of Live in Italy magazine. We have a team of writers from all over the world bringing you the most up-to-date stories about travel, art, culture, food and wine, and how to live your authentic life, not necessarily in Italy, but also at home. You can find us at www.liveinitalymag.com on social media, your platform of choice, at Live in Italy Mag. And please remember to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Every like counts. See you soon. A presto.